All right. Um, first, let's read today's passage, which is going to be Romans chapter 5 from verses 8 to 11, and I'll be reading us the verses. But God demonstrates his love, own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, Christ's blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him, Christ. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only this, but also exalt in God through our Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Amen. Um, before we begin, let me pray for us real quick. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, we start this time by once again giving you glory. All glory to you, Lord. And it is that recognition that we are here tonight and also recognition that you allowed us to come here and worship you. And with that, we give you glory and also we give you our thanks. We give you thanksgiving because you have allowed us here to gather in your name and worship you. And we thank you for that privilege you have given us another night. Father, at this time, please be with us as we delve into your word and also fill us all up with the Holy Spirit so that we take in your words and let it transform our hearts and into our lives. And also, Father God, at this time, um, well, we recognize how fortunate we are to be here in peace. We also lift up those around the world who are going through hardships, like those who are devastated by the fire in Hawaii, those who are devastated by the war in Ukraine, those who are under persecution in various parts of the world, and all the hardships and sufferings we do not even know about. And Lord, we lift those people up so that we ask you to comfort them, comfort them by the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. And those who our lives are devastated, let their lives be rebuilt in Christ. So we lift those people up to you, Lord. So please be with us tonight. And though uh, uh, few in number, we hope, we pray that our worship is, is, is acceptable and pleases you. And that's what we want. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Um, tonight, I don't know what's going to happen because I have been told by the pastor uh, not to preach. <laughs> he said, give a message, but don't preach. Okay? Um, so I actually don't even have an outline. I, I, I don't have an outline. Um, I thought about coming up here with nothing, but... Um, the Baptist in me told me, no, I have to bring at least a Bible up here. So I brought my Bible up here. But uh, other than that, I, I, I don't know how this is going to go. So um, you guys aren't going to find out. It's not just you guys, but I'll also find out how tonight goes. We're in this together tonight, okay? Um, so it could finish in like as short as 10, 15 minutes, or it can go as long as an hour. Um, only the Holy Spirit knows, as he will guide me tonight. Um, Tonight, uh, we read this passage, and I, and I chose this passage because last week, uh, the pastor mentioned about the verses that speak to you, the Bible verses that speak to you. And now, of course, uh, I, I want to say, ah, yes, the whole Bible speaks to me, all equally. I want to say that, but um, there are certain verses that speak to me more so than others. Tonight's verses, passage that we read, is one such. And I want to 
tell you a little bit of my story as we go through these verses. As we go through these verses. And again, I don't know how it's going to go. Hopefully, it's going to be a great ride. Now, of course, um, over the weekend, uh, we had the, the storm. I believe it, the name was Hillary um, come through, and it devastated some people's houses, homes. Um, and some weren't affected. Like our home, we had no problem. Thank God for that. But when the storm was announced, when it was announced, there were two types of people. There were two types of people when the storm was announced. Those who were really, really, really afraid of it and those who were indifferent to it. So those who were really afraid of it, what they did was they went to Costco and they just grabbed everything and they're like, oh my goodness, it's going to be the end of the world. And those who were indifferent to it just stayed home and enjoyed the rain. I was in category two. I didn't really care. <laughs> storm comes and goes. Uh, it's not my first storm, so I was like, okay, whatever. But that's the thing. There are two reactions. One where you're deathly afraid of it, and one where it's not. And, and why? Why were some people really, really afraid of the storm, right? It's because of its power of what it's going to do, and the fact that you can't prevent it from coming. With all the great technology we have, you, we can't stop the storm from coming. It will arrive. Now, of course, there are some storms in the past where it just teased a little bit and goes. It's, it's the storm's, um, how do I say it? Uh, desire of the storm to do whatever it wants, so to speak. But that's the thing. Humanity is, is powerless to the oncoming storm. With that in mind, I want to remind us of the day that will come for all of humanity. Hillary came only for Southern California, but the day will come for all of us, every single one of us, not just us here, but for all of humanity. That day will come, and with it, God's wrath is coming, the day of the judgment. We cannot do anything about it. Originally, when the day of the judgment came, was announced, there was nothing anyone could do about it. Nothing can prevent it. And to this day of the judgment, there are three categories of people. Three. First, those who are deathly afraid of it. Ah, the end of the, um, the end of the world. Oh no, what's gonna happen? And then there's the category two, which gets divided into further sections of two. Those who are deathly afraid, and then those who are not afraid. But there are two categories of people why they're not afraid. One for good reason, one for not. Those who are not afraid for the wrong reason is because of indifference. I don't care. I don't believe it. So what? Ah. There's no such thing. And then there's the last category, which I pray that all of us here are part of, which are the category of believers. We're not afraid of the day of the judgment. It, 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 it's actually, if you think about it, it's the day that we look forward to. We look forward to. There's actually joy of, on the day of the judgment. Why? Because that's the day. That is the day. That is the day that we are finally in communion, in eternal communion with Jesus Christ. And that is the day that we look forward to. Now, there is some sadness. Don't get me wrong. There is some sadness. Why? Because there are going to be so many people, so many people who are not going to be saved that day. And that is super unfortunate. That, that, is, that tears at my heart for those who won't be saved. But overall, it is a joyous, joyous day. Now, a um, little bit of eschatology here. Uh, I'm an amillennialist, whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> 
and then there's gonna i'm sure there's some pre-millennialists here and post-millennialists here uh how i say it is i'm an amillennialist until the day of the judgment until the events unfold i'm an amillennialist and then when the events unfold then i'm i'll be either pre post or i'll be right it doesn't matter um but of course, uh, that's until the end. And I'm certain about my salvation. Do I deserve it? I don't. But I am certain about my salvation. And I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for that. So even right now, even if right now we hear some kind of like horns off over there, like, like what's, what's that sound? Okay, focus, focus here, focus here. Ooh, you're like, huh, what's going on? And we start getting like lifted up. Um, yeah, I know I'll be meeting Jesus in the sky. Yeah. Um, I wish I was with my parents as we go up, but hey, that's fine. I'll meet them soon. Um, but that's the thing. I am certain, certain about my salvation. And I pray and hope that's the same for those of us here tonight. Why? It's because of tonight's passage. Reconciliation. Reconciled. I have been reconciled to God through Christ. It wasn't an easy journey. It was not. But I, I have been, and for that I am eternally thankful for that. Now, of course, my journey has been from deathly afraid of the, the end of the, ju uh, the, the, the judgment day to... I don't care about the judgment day for the wrong reason. And then now here I am. I'm not afraid of the judgment day for the right reason. When I was younger, um, well, for, first, first of all, my father is a pastor. So I'm a PK, pastor's kid. Um, and I always thought I was part of those who were reconciled when I was younger. I was not. I was just in denial, but I did not believe. So what the, what the verse 8 says, I was one of those sinners. I was. Because here's, here, here's one of the events that happen. Well, we go to summer retreat while we're singing songs. Oh, God, we love you. Yes, my life for Jesus. Yes. Soon as songs are over during the retreat, we go, that same night, things happen for the wars with our youth group. The, the older students I was with, some hanky-panky going on even. And I'm thinking, what did I witness right there when we were worshiping God and we're here? Is there no work of the Spirit? So from there, my journey goes on. And I realized, oh, I don't believe in God. But the problem is, it didn't just stop there. In college, I wanted to be God. If there's no God, then let me be God. Now, of course, for those of us who don't believe, or who didn't believe, we're gods of our world to a certain degree. I was full on degree. <laughs> like I wanted to be worshiped degree. That much. So during those times, tonight's verse 10, for if while we were enemies, that speaks to me. I'm not just somebody who didn't believe in God and I didn't care. That that That's not not just a sinner, but enemies of God. Now, of course, not believing in God already, it means you are enemy of God. But in my case, I, I was literally against God. I had anger towards God. God, if you are, are all that loving, all that powerful, how can you let those who love you 
those who serve your church go through such hardship, hardships. I could not get that to, to, to make sense. And so I concluded there was no God. And because there's no God, I need to become God. That was, that was, that, that, that's who I was during high, uh, college days. Thank God he, he, he still had his love uh, reach me even through those times. Oh, my Lord. Now, in Matthew 8, verse 12, Matthew 8, verse 12, there's a famous line that Jesus says. I'm paraphrasing here, but he says, uh, Sons of the kingdom will be thrown out into the outer darkness. For in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I understood what weeping was. Okay, you go to hell. You don't want to be there. Of course, you're weeping. I didn't quite understand what it meant by gnashing of teeth. W why? Well, finds out it's because if you have hatred towards God, then even his just punishment on you, you'll still have that hatred. So even in hell, you're saying, God, why did you put me here? You're still expressing your anger for eternity, hatred for eternity. And that's what I realized, oh my goodness. Yeah, if God left me alone, I wouldn't be part of those who were weeping. I, I, I would be part of those who were gnashing in teeth. That, that's who I would have been. And again, thank God. <laughs> he brought me out of that. Thank God. And I'm sure you guys have your, oh my goodness, thank God. He brought me out of that moments too. But coming back here, um, now, in college, I, I, I was a philosophy major, so I was thinking about a lot of things. And I guess this was God's way of bringing me back. And this question dawned upon me. What is the meaning of life? Cliché question as it can be. Common question as it can be. What is the meaning of life? And I thought about it. I really thought about it. And I thought, as much as a great God I wanted to be, in the end, I was, I was just a human, a finite being, right? So if I were to die and 100 years pass, what is meaning to my life? Right? Those people who are suffering in Hawaii, 100 years later, if nobody remembers the incident, what about all the sufferings those people are going through? Is there meaning to their suffering? In your lives, I don't know what it may be. Things that happen. If there's nobody to remember it for you forever, where's the meaning in what you go through? I thought there isn't, there isn't. If the world ended tomorrow and there's no record of humanity, all the struggles, all the sufferings that we went through, no meaning whatsoever, none. Now people say, oh, meaning is something that you give, just enjoy the moment. Okay, well, beyond the moment. Is there something eternal out there? for us because if not then what are we what am i doing what what is there for me to live this life by so either there is meaning to life because there is something out there to give it meaning or there isn't and i really thought about this question and i just could not say that there is no meaning i i, I just could not i i don't know maybe um, the, there are people out there who, who, who are brave enough to come to that conclusion, but I just could not come to the conclusion that there's no meaning to life. But if there is meaning to life, then who gives it? Who gives it this 
this transcendent meaning to life. Ooh. That's when I realized, oh, there has to be something more to this life than just this I'm seeing. And that took me step by step towards God. Now, was I saved? I was not saved. Not yet. But those are the steps God took to reconcile my relationship with God. And that is the crazy story. Why? Why does he? Now, after years later, I was in a car driving in the freeway. And I asked God while I was driving, God, why do you love us so much? Why? I don't understand. Who are you? Why do you love us so much? And at that moment, God told me, I love you. That's all that needed to happen. I started, like, tears started coming out. I'm like, God, this is not the great time. I'm on a freeway. <laughs> I, need to, I just exited out real quick. And I just went to the nearest parking space I could find to calm down after crying and, and saying, oh, God, I can't believe you love us so much. It just makes no sense how much love he has for us. It makes no sense. But he does. And he demonstrated it. He demonstrated it right on the cross. We're not saved through our works. We're saved through the work of Christ that he did on the cross for us. So we don't have to do anything. Well, we can't. We're not, we're not, we're not even uh, uh, worthy of such thing. And that's the thing. While... We were enemies. And I really want us to think about that. When we were in the state of unbelief, it wasn't just, all right, God's over there and I'm over here. I have no relations to you. It, it's not just that. It means you were, we were actively against God. I, I hope people understand this. It's not... Just nowadays is, oh, you know, just believe whatever you want to believe and that's fine. No, it's not fine. That's not fine. Your choice of not believing means you're actively against God. No, no, no. I go to, I go to some other religion or, oh, no, I believe in peace and all that. No, no. I, I, I am not making it up. I'm sorry. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that if you're not reconciled to God, you're actively against God. And this verse just spoke to me about what it means to be enemies of God. Isn't that crazy? To think that I was an enemy against God, but looking back on my life, I was. I was. And that's why this verse spoke out to me so much, because I was going against God. And think about that. God, who loved us so much that he, he gave his only son to die on the cross. He didn't just give his son and that was it. The son, in obedience to the Father's will, came here in human form, lived through human experience, experienced what we were going through, and ultimately went through suffering and died a painful death on the cross. That, that's who God is, and that's how much love he had for us. Can you imagine telling that God, I hate you. I want nothing to do with you. Can you imagine what God would feel in his heart? 
Today's passage says reconciliation. Reconciliation. Why is it a reconciliation? Why isn't an agreement? Why isn't a unity? Why isn't it just two people, two parties coming together? It says reconciliation because there was conflict between the two parties, and the thing is, we were the offenders. Isn't that crazy? We were the offenders. Looking back on my life, I was the offender. I was the offender. And yet, God, in His love, He reached out to me. Still, even though I actively rejected God and tried to become become God of my own world, He actively still reached out. For His love knows no bounds. And reconciled me to His love. And now that I am reconciled to Him, it makes even less sense of God's love. It makes even less sense. Now, I don't need it to make it sense. I'm I'm glad I'm on Team God, Team Jesus. I'm glad that's done with, and and I, I will be forever working towards uh, uh, His kingdom and His church until the day I go to Jesus or He comes to us, whatever, whichever way. But until that day, that love of God is is what. I'll be living by, and I and I pray that that's what you you will be um, living by as well, through the love of God, and so that's why, in today's passage, the last verse says that, and not only this, but we also exalt in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. We celebrate, we have joy. Because the conflict is over. The conflict is over. It's a conflict that we would never win. It was something we would have never won. Now that it's over, we exalt, we celebrate, we have joy in Christ. And so that's why I, 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 I have a question for you guys tonight. And I have, a, and I, I always ask this question for everybody. Why do you want to go to heaven? Is the question. Why? I ask my 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 students at at our church. I ask that question, and whenever uh, they, one time when they had me, um, give the give the message, I ask the adults the same question. Why do you want to go to heaven? If your answer is not because of Jesus. If it's something else, then I'll just be brutally honest with you. Please rethink about your faith. If Jesus is not the reason why you want to go to heaven, got to think about your faith one more time. Oh, because I don't want to go to a bad place. Oh, because there's going to be uh, lots of houses and gold and all that good stuff there. Heaven is heaven. Because of who is in heaven, not because of what the place is. And so, again, I, I challenge you guys tonight, please. Why do you want to go to heaven, right? If it's not for Christ, why? And so, believers who say they're Christian, but they have, they're always frowning, and life is always hard, and and, and the Christian life is always difficult. It's like, oh, well, maybe you haven't reconciled with God yet. Because if you did, you will have joy in Christ. Now, will there be moments of, of hardships? Yeah, of course. I'm not saying you have to be happy all the time. But if you're always, always having a hard time, oh, it's already Sunday. Oh, I got to go to service. Ah, oh, I got to read the book. If that's your attitude about this, you haven't reconciled with God. I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. You have not. And so, if that's the case, I pray that you do reconcile with God. Now, 
I believe that everyone here have already reconciled with God. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, but I'm saying, for anybody you know, all right, or those of you who are watching, if you have not, please, please, be, be honest. Please, be honest with your heart. Only you know your own heart. Please, be honest with your heart and ask, have I reconciled with God? Have I reconciled with God? Because if I have not, then sooner the better. <laughs> this moment is the moment. Because while we were sinners, God, he loved us so much that he sent his only son to die for us. And once he died and came back from resurrection, he went up to heaven now is the time of the Spirit. And those who believe in, in, in Jesus as their Lord and Savior will be saved. That's the gospel. And another favorite uh, uh, verse of mine, Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to those who believe, to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, as they're God's people of the Old Testament. And also to the Greek. Beautiful. So please, start your journey. If you have not reconciled to God, start your journey with the gospel. Okay. So let me conclude tonight. Um, I have no idea how it was going to go tonight. Hopefully it went well. <laughs> okay. Um, again, I, I wasn't up here to, to really preach at you guys. I was here to share um, my little journey. Um, well, I'm embarrassed about it, but, but, but I want to highlight this. If God can save someone like me who actively went against God, oh, then there's nobody he can't save. There's nobody who can, he can't save. He can save anybody only through the gospel. Only through the gospel. And so tonight, um, I, I want us to pray a little bit uh, right now. And I want us to pray for reconciliation. If you have reconciled with God, great. Then at this time, pray for those you know who haven't. If they need to come to Christ, please pray for them at this time.